Welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. I'm Pastor Joey Rogers, glad that you've joined me today. I wanna share with you a little excerpt from the recent Prophecy Files Bible Prophecy Conference with my special guest, Bill Federer. What an incredible mind that he has in history and in the Word of God, and matching those two together to the current events of the day was absolutely incredible. I wanna share a little bit of it with you right now, and then I'll be back in just a moment. The most common form of government is gangs, right? If we were to get rid of all the laws and all the police, what would happen? It would be fine for a couple of days and then people would rob the stores and when they realized they weren't caught, they'd start robbing houses and then you would have to organize your neighborhood and you'd have somebody to defend as your captain and then the bad guys and so gangs. And so uh, a king is nothing more than a glorified gang leader. And then you go through these 6,000 years of world history and it's gangs and pharaohs and Caesars and Kaisers and sultans and czars and maharajas and Attila the Hun, Genghis Khan, and they keep getting bigger and bigger because with military advancements, kings can kill more people. And with technological advancements, they can track more people. And so um, wherever there's a king, you have to believe the way the king says. What the king believes, the kingdom believes. If you do, if you do not believe the way your king does, it's considered treason and the king would kill you. And so let's look at the Reformation started in 1517 and percentages of countries began to be Protestant and some stayed Catholic and, and then you had the Iron Duke of Alba. He was sent by the King of Spain to Antwerp, Holland and he killed 10,000 Dutch Reformed Protestants, left their bodies in the streets. And then you had the Queen of France, Catherine de' Medici and about 10% of France is Huguenot and they uh, have a leader named Henry of Navarre. And so the queen organizes a marriage of her daughter, Margaret, to the main Protestant leader, Henry of Navarre, in Paris. A couple days after the wedding, she has her soldiers pull chains across the streets so the carriages cannot get out of town. And she sends her soldiers house to house and they kill 30,000 Protestant leaders. It's called the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. And so you have this situation in Europe of what are we supposed to do with Romans chapter 13? Let everyone be subject to the governing authority for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authority has existed and established by God. But what if the authority literally has a mandate to kill your wife and kids? Are you supposed to say, okay, here they are, kill them. And so in the, um, so you had reformers protesting and they were nicknamed protestants. <laughs> and, um, one of them was John Calvin. He says, we are subject to the men who rule over us, but subject only in the Lord. If they command anything against him, let us not pay the least regard to it. And so this is like the scripture in the Bible, children obey your parents, but what if there's a bad parent who tells, tells the kid to sell themselves into prostitution and kill the neighbor? Is the child supposed to obey that parent? No, the child obeys the parent as long as the parent's telling them to do something that lines up with God's word. So you obey the government as long as the government is telling you to do something that lines up with God's word. Why would God tell you to do something in his word and then tell you to submit to a government that tells you not to do what he just got done telling you to do? And so Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from the Birmingham jail, 1963, said, one may well ask, how can you advocate breaking some laws and obeying others? The answer lies in the fact that there are two types of laws, just and unjust. He goes on, now one not only has a legal, but a moral responsibility to obey just laws. Conversely, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. How does one determine whether a law is just or unjust? A just law is a man-made code that squares with the moral law or the law of God. So you have kings for most of world history and you got to believe the way the king does and then the reformation starts and then you got a group of people saying, wait a second, if uh, Samuel Rutherford wrote a book called uh, Lex Rex, Lex means law, Rex means king. And so the law is above the king. And so when the king stops obeying God's law, you don't have to obey the king anymore. And so uh, the Calvinist Puritans developed a way for people to rule themselves without a king. It's called the covenant form of government and uh, everybody has to be involved with it. And they got their idea from ancient Israel that first 400 years out of Egypt before King Saul. 
First time in world history, about 1400 BC, Israel comes out of Egypt, millions of people, no king. And it worked because the priest taught the law. And so the covenant form of government is where you get blessings from God, you voluntarily share them with your neighbor because you're doing it as unto God. You get rights from your creator. You're fair to your neighbor because you're accountable to God who is not a respecter of persons. And so where did they get their idea? From that first 400 years out of Egypt before King Saul. It's the book of Judges. We don't really realize how unique that period of history is. That there's millions of people and no king. And it worked because everyone was taught the law. And so it's this idea that uh, you have an opportunity to steal, nobody's around, you know you can get away with it. And then you think, God is watching me. He wants me to be fair. He's gonna hold me accountable in the future. Maybe I should hesitate stealing. And it creates something in your head called the conscience. If everybody in the country really believes this, you can maintain complete order with no police. And so that's what they had in ancient Israel. And so uh, it's called the Hebrew Republic, and these reformers, these Puritan scholars looked to this, and they were nicknamed Christian Hebraists. James Harrington, John Sadler, whose sister Ann Sadler married John Harvard. That's why they taught Hebrew at Yale and Harvard. So in a sense, King Saul is the divider between England and America. You're like, King Saul, didn't he live like thousands of years earlier? Right, the kings of England looked to the Bible for their authority, but they looked to the anointed King Saul and on. The Calvinist Puritans looked to the Bible for their authority, but they looked to the pre-King Saul period. There's 400 years, millions of people, no king. And so it was the Calvinist Puritans that founded New England that turned into America. Jesus says, upon this rock I'll build my church. The word he uses is ekklesia. Ek means out of, ecclesia means a calling. They had 6,000 citizens in the Greek city of Athens. They would call them out to their marketplace to deliberate, to decide, to get involved in fixing the walls and the navy and teaching the kids. There was no king to tell them what to do. It was the people that had to decide what to do. And they all worked together. And Jesus chose that word. He's talking about his body. Everybody has to be a part, an eye, an ear, a foot. And so in this congregational model of church government, the pastor's job is to teach everyone how to have their own personal relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ that died on the cross to pay for their sins. And then the pastor coaches each believer to become a mature Christian. You get in the habit of reading through the Bible yourself. You get in the habit of praying every day and then plug into the body and do something. My special guest, Bill Federer, is who you've been hearing today, and the entirety of both of his sessions are available at paceassembly.org. I promise you, you want to go there and hear what he has to say. It is historical, it's current, and it is prophetic in all that he is bringing. So watch it in its entirety. You'll be blessed by it. Till the next time we get together at Prophecy Files Briefing, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.